The global economy is about 60, 65 trillion dollars. And you're talking about hedge funds that are now leveraged and talk about hedge funds, pension funds, institutional funds, private equity all across the board, well north of $600 trillion. So when you're talking about something that is basically the global economy is leveraged almost 12 to 1. So the problem becomes is that if something breaks, and this is what the Fed's terrified of, that if something breaks within the system, this immense amount of leverage that has to be unwound will be unwound very quickly, and it will be something that even they can't mitigate. And that's the big fear. It's too big for them now. It's too big to fail. The entire financial system has become too big to fail at this point because if something breaks, the unwinding process is larger than all the central banks can can afford to muster to try to bail out. It's just too big. The Patriotic Millionaires Group, right? Now, this is a group mostly of liberals, but it's a group of wealthy people who support hiking taxes on the rich. 121 people that signed a letter that went to Davos to urge our politicians and leaders and global elite of the world to raise taxes on millionaires to say that we prefer taxes over pitchforks because the wealth gap has gotten so disproportionate now that they're afraid that the the poor are going to rise up with pitchforks and come and kill them all. Let me I'm, I'm, I'm going to help all you patriotic millionaires out. So if you are part of one of these patriotic millionaires, you're listening to the show now. And this is completely legal. It's completely functional. And all the rest of us poor people would absolutely love for you to do this for us. There's no law in the country that says that you can't just write a check to the U.S. Treasury. In fact, they would love you to do it. And uh, what you do is you, you make the check out payable to the U.S. Treasury in the memo line. You say apply to the national debt. They will be more than happy to accept your payment. So feel free. So, you know, if you think you should pay more taxes, there's absolutely nothing stopping you from writing a check to the U.S. government and to the U.S. Treasury in particular. And that money will actually go down to pay our national debt. Study out over the weekend, the top 1% have more wealth now than the bottom, like, 4 billion people in the world. It's that skewing of the data that leads to the issue. And inequality is what people are upset about. You've got this whole group of individuals, the ultra rich in Davos right now, talking about the economic world outlook and their focus is on climate change, not solving the inequality problems, not trying to get the inequality problems you know, situated, not trying to create better economic prosperity for those at the, at the bottom of the income ladder. No, they're more concerned about climate change, which I'm not saying is not important, but that's not what economic forums, quote unquote, and particularly with the ultra rich should be about. This is this is basically just a gaggle of a bunch of rich people getting together, figuring out how to make more money from everybody else. Right. So, you know, this really isn't about solving moral problems. Don't be deluded that it is. They're not there to help you. It's more about how to help themselves and, and how for them to get richer. It's an interesting statement from President Trump that the very small bit of tightening they did wrecked the ability of the economy to grow at 4%. And if we just hadn't done that small bit of interest rate hike or small bit of tightening that, you know, we'd have this massive growth in the economy. But yet there's no evidence when we were at zero and massively expanding the balance sheet that you were going to get 4% growth. First of all, we're at our limits as far as rates go. So rates can be lowered. They could be lowered to negative rates. But as we're finding the marginal benefit is so minimal of lower and lower rates. And if you want evidence, go look in uh, Europe where rates are negative, where companies can even borrow at negative rates, where in a few rare instances, mortgages are negative rates. And it's not pushing up growth in those areas. So the benefit of lower rates is very marginal at best. It does help companies stay in business. So maybe it keeps growth where it's at today, maybe slightly higher, but it's certainly not going to be a boom to the economy. Brent asked me while during the monologue here that, uh, you know, what uh, day is actually Chinese New Year? It's January 25th, ah. uh, which is actually, and it's the year of the rat. So my brother should be right at home. Uh, <laughs> just joking. <laughs> just joking. Wait, okay, maybe a little. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, I was also born in May, so I'm, you know, the, my Chinese zodiac is the snake, and my mm. my normal zodiac is Taurus the bull, right? So, okay, yeah. Um, so I just happened to be reading, you know, apparently 2020 is going to be pretty good for Taurians. So if you were born in the month of May, 2020 is an auspicious month for travel and financial blessings. Uh, June 2020 will come with good health and new opportunities for Taurians. July 2020 is a good month to pursue a new skill and develop your chances for procuring a better job. And uh, August will see you come into money from an unexpected source. Really? Yes. Isn't that the uh, the end of a quarter? I don't know. It's just somewhere in of August. I'm just thinking quarterly no, bonus for you, you know? No, no, that's September. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> but August. <laughs> quarterly bonuses, that would be expected. Yeah. Right? So yeah. this is an unexpected oh, source. Oh, an unexpected like, source. Okay. You know, like your executive producer kicks the bucket and leaves you money in the will. <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> Which part? Kicking the bucket or leaving you money? Probably the bucket. <laughs> 